Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certifications. We are in Chapter 1 talking about the test management activities and uh, uh, we are still in 1.2 talking about the context of testing where we shall be now today looking at 1.2.5 that is test management activities at various test levels and we would like to understand what kind of events takes place as a part of different test levels when it comes to entire software testing lifecycle. Well, to start with, of course, from the foundation level, we have already understood what are the major phases of the testing lifecycle. And as a part of it, we also have covered that various test levels which we conduct as a part of the entire testing lifecycle. So namely, we talk about component testing, component integration testing, system testing, system integration and acceptance. These are the five major levels which we have covered in foundation. We already know what exactly the objectives and uh, key activities being performed here, what's the methodology used, what kind of techniques we can have, and what exactly could be the way, like the test types which can be used for different levels here. In this particular tutorial, we'll be trying to understand that from a management perspective, what are the major events or activities which take place as a part of each of these test levels. So let's get into that quickly and try understanding how these levels get organized by the test manager. So the very first level here, of course, is to talk about the competent testing. And in competent testing, uh, we define the scope, the objectives and completion criteria for the component test. Involve testers in activities beyond traditional testing roles, such as code review, where their analytical skills can add value and coordinate with the development team for issue resolution and unit test contributions. However, we know that from a long time that unit testing is a key responsibility of the development team in most of the organization. In some organizations, we do see that testers may perform the required uh, unit levels or unit tests. The reason could be that the system requires you to have independent testing as much as possible. But at the same time, we would like to remind you here that the testers are not restricted from the unit tests. That means they can very well participate in, they can contribute in terms of analyzing the code review reports, they can help team understand that what kind of code is being built, like developers can help them understand what code they are writing if in case they are planning to automate. And at the same time, the testers can contribute from the uh, terms of let them letting them know that what kind of additional defects can be identified when it comes to such codes, because we should never underestimate the knowledge, experience, and capabilities of the test engineers as they come with those defined capabilities of identifying the defects, right? That's where it is crucially and very importantly uh, Im important to consider that the testers should participate right from the beginning. So it's not that they should perform it, but again, if there's someone else is performing, they could be a, a very, very even contributor as a part of it. The next important thing here is the next one that is component integration testing. And here we look forward to determine the integration sequences and test combinations in collaboration with the development team, taking into account the SDLC model, tools and process. Oversee progress to ensure it aligns with system and acceptance testing strategies. Manage these phase cooperatively with the developer, considering component integration testing as well. That is more of like the part of it where we look forward to inter interact with the developers, help them understand that what are the expectations. So again, based on the in in interactions with several organizations, what I have understood is integrations may have a mutual participation from both. It's not necessary that only developers should do it, or it's not only necessary that testers will always perform it. Some organizations we see developers do perform these, or some places we do see testers may participate to contribute as integrations are stepping in. And a general recommendation for any organization is that, not uh, maybe from unit testing, but from integration point of view, we should look forward to have higher independent or independence level of testing. That means an independent team should be performing the required test so that we can start resulting into detecting defects earlier in the life cycle. And this indeed in that context, we are clearly saying that we look forward to oversee the progress rather than getting directly involved but seeing that how much things are getting covered from the system and acceptance point. And same way, we look forward to collaborate with the development team, uh, considering all the SDLC actions into account. 
So that's pretty much what we look forward to do as a part of component integration testing, but can be a relevant part for the development team to perform them and fulfill the needs of it. Next one, of course, to talk about is our next level, that is system integration testing. Now here, we look forward to ensure the scope and objective of the system integration testing are very clearly understood and attuned to risk assessment and quality targets. Because right from here, at this point of time, we'll start looking forward to plan our executions to that of what we have identified as risk. So relating back to risk-based testing, as a part of risk-based testing, we would have identified several product risks which might be related to uh, integration parameter of the system. And that's where the system integrations may start looking forward to mitigate or perform those executions, which would help to mitigate the known risk. Further to add here, of course, the next one is maintain oversights of the progress, outcomes and issue management during system integration testing. So a manager should look forward to find out ways by which we can keep a track of the progress, the various outcomes, and how exactly the various issues will be managed. Now here the issues are not just listed to defect. We may have collaborations and uh, contributions from other stakeholders. And that is where the test management should be actively participating in to make sure that their team gets every single thing what they need or how we integrate our system with other systems. So there might be a lot of other stakeholders who will be joining in. So doing that collaboration would be of uh, great in aspect. So that's where the test manager should look forward to have an active participation here. The next one, of course, is the system level. And here the system testing is uh, to tailor planning to SDLC model uh, with careful allocation of resources, tool selection and scheduling as well. For agile projects, integrate system testing with iterative story testing, avoiding distinct test phases and ensure testing is continuous and integrated while in sequential models, Testing may follow planned stages. And I think that makes it pretty clear because when we talk about system testing, we might be performing a lot of executions which are relevant to it. So the resource allocation, the tool selection, and the required timeline and uh, effectiveness of these uh, activities on time would play a very vital role. But however, when it comes to two different SDLC models, which we just compared a moment back, like in our previous tutorial, we discussed that uh, for SDLC models, uh, sorry, uh, the traditional models, sequential models, things might be slightly different, but when it comes to Agile, it'll be more of like within the life cycle, that is the sprint. So it's not that uh, the events would happen separately, but would take place as a part of the sprint itself. So we need to really have that understanding that how exactly this adds value from the overall point of view. So main things would be to make sure that the addressing of uh, the final level of testing should be done effectively at any point of time, right? Finally, to add the last level here, that is acceptance testing. And uh, when we talk about acceptance, we pretty much know that acceptance testing is more from the business point of view, accepting your product with a sign off. So here we collaborate with the stakeholders to review and confirm the fulfillment of acceptance criteria and plan testing activities, including managing user testings in the UAT. Now here the word plan should not be misunderstood that we are not exactly planning for them. It's more of like planning are those activities which are going to help them do the user acceptance testing. So maybe our contribution sometime we may help them with the process. We may help them with some of the unique test cases which we might have created. If required, we can even pass on the automated test suite which we may have uh, to help them minimize their efforts. But again, it's not necessary that this is the way it should always happen. The customer has the complete freedom to define their own way of testing the system, okay? So they may have their own test cases, they may have their own automation, but totally depends on what kind of technical skills and capabilities they have about the testing. Sometimes our test cases can also be used in different organizations as a part of UAT. The second point here says coordinate acceptance testing logistics. Coordinate, again, we are not implementing it, we are not planning for it, we are just coordinating to help them understand. Facilitating test at the customer side to ensure the product meets the business needs and the quality standards outside of the development environment. So of course the UAD's environments would be a slightly different from that of yours and uh, maybe the business is slightly uh, getting confused with the environment setup or what kind of test did you run, what kind of service to be triggered. So maybe, you know, an API to be called or network uh, database to be connected. There might be several prerequisites 
to run a particular test. So sometimes the customers may not be professional testers or may not be so technically strong that they really understand in and out about uh, running an application. So testers at this point of time are required to support and coordinate with the acceptance test team to help them understand what's the procedures which they can follow in order to run a test. And finally to add here, of course, is to talk about facilitate the resolution of any issues with UAD and guide stakeholders through the process of product sign off upon meeting the acceptance criteria. So it's not necessary that acceptance testing will not find any kind of defects. So if you find any defects, help them get that facilitated to resolve and also help them to get the required sign off done so that uh, the criteria can be mutually agreed, like number of defects open or those things which will be fulfilling later, what are the known defects which we are probably not fixing now, but uh, we'll be working on later. So it'll all be agreed together and help them to get the required sign off done. And once we have that, we know the process is complete. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.